my trajectory has always been to try to serve the community, and education was the way for me. So when we say put money into it, we, schools are supposed to work. And one of the most ironic things that occurred for me, I was a principal of Washington High, and I've said this publicly many times, so this won't be the first time I've said this. A movie was made about my experiences at Washington. I spent 10 years there. And this is the school where the Crips gang originated. Stanley Williams, who was executed, must be over 10 years now. They called him Tookie. I'm not trying to idolize him. I'm just using his name. He, one of the founders of the Crips, one of some other guys. They executed him. And he never really disavowed the Crips, okay? Uh, people tried to say he did, but he didn't. But Washington High School was a place to avoid. By the time I left there, it was overcrowded with people fighting to get in. Now, a movie is made because that's supposed to be remarkable. Here's the, here's the worst part about it. Why is a school that works remarkable? It suggests that that's unusual and surprising. And instead of bring, being celebratory about a school that works, or the principal along with the staff that, that helped it, that made it work, made it work, didn't work on its own. Um, we should be outraged when it didn't work, but we're not outraged. We have schools in our neighborhood right now that are under-enrolled. People don't want to go to it. I won't call the names of these schools, both middle schools and high schools. They would rather go, our people, rather go west or to the valley, any place except our own neighborhood, right? There are people who live in Lamert Park who legally go to the west side, don't have to go to Crenshaw, don't have to go to Dorsey, and prefer not to go. And they all look like us. That's inside of us, that's our culture. So my expectation is to make the schools work. You gotta force them to work. So you need the right people, and you need the tenacity. It's a seven day a week job. Uh, and now I'm on the school board. And this is my neighborhood. So one of the things I plan to do is continue the revolution and try to inspire people to just not just sit there and complain about, well, what were we gonna do? What are they gonna do? And we can march all we want to, but somebody's gotta make some policies. When you say you need the right people, what people do you need? We need people, in, we need principals of schools to make schools work. Schools are not gonna work. So at the top, so we want you to start. The principal's not even the top. You gotta start with the people who hire the principals and train the principals. Okay, principals can't read books on how to be a principal. So we have to find an experienced person who knows how to hire the staff, who hires the other staff, who runs the school. Right. A school does not run itself. Right. You know, a school is not a containment place where kids just show up every day because they have to. It ought to be a place of inspiration. You ought to miss school when you don't show up, right? And the teachers ought to miss you when you don't show up. They ought to call you, why weren't you here? Don't say, I'm glad he's not here. Uh, when he comes in, he's just a pain. I, he can't learn, I can't teach him. That's ridiculous. You don't need those kind of people teaching kids. Not our kids, okay? Uh, our kids do come sometimes, many of them, especially the kids of poverty. They come to school in the kindergarten, first grade, behind already. So you gotta accelerate them as quickly as possible. So I've got a resolution that we just passed about three months ago. And I'm frustrated that it's, right now it's just a piece of paper because we haven't done anything about it. We've been sidetracked with all these other things with the new superintendent. The budget is a mess. Uh, we, we're in a deficit, as you, if you will. And it says zero dropouts. Zero dropouts means that nobody drops out of the LA Unified School District, nobody. Now how do we make, that's just a word. That's like all children can learn, you know. Black Lives Matter, those are just words. We kill ourselves, so how much do black lives, and to whom do they matter? Do they matter to the people themselves? To the young brothers who don't mind dying? For what? So the question is, how important can we make school to everybody? How enthusiastic? What, how much um, magnetism can we put into a school that you, sorry that you're not there, you wanna be there? And I started with all kinds of suggestions, which will require resources. One is, if you're in high school, and you haven't graduated in four years, could you stay a fifth year? Because you don't have enough, because if we put you out, you can't come back. And you can't get a diploma, you can get a GED, that's not the same as a diploma. It helps, but you need a diploma. Because you can't get certain jobs without that diploma. With a diploma, you can be a police officer, but you gotta get a high school diploma. You can't join the military, get a high school diploma, see? 
And so the importance of that. And then you push it back down to middle school. Students that are not reading on grade level in middle school, how do we expect them to get into high school and just automatically catch up? How do they get behind in the first place? So why are the students who are skills deficient? There's two primary skills, well, three, reading and writing and arithmetic, if you want, or mathematics. And if we don't focus on that so that students are proficient, read on grade level, can write complete sentences, and can solve mathematical problems, don't have to be complex problems, just, you know, how much, how much paint would it take to paint this room and how much money would I need to pay for it after I measure it and all this, and how, how, much, money, how much change would I get back? If I went out and bought paint at, you know, three gallons of paint, how much and all of that. So the issue is teaching kids to think. That is what we are about in school. That's what we're supposed to do. Because nobody knows what they're going to be when they're in high school. We can say all kinds of things. What's going on with the teachers? I mean, um, are the teachers lacking um, certain skills? Some are. They're not able to deal with these certain inner city kids? Some are. Some teachers are only effective in front of certain kids. There are many teachers I know who are wonderful teachers. They can teach anywhere. There are others who get awards, but you change their neighborhood, they're not award-winning teachers anymore, you know? So we are at the mercy, the children are at the mercy of the teachers, and the teachers are responsive to the principal. So the question for the principal is, how many ineffective teachers can you tolerate? Then we have to say to the district, why do you keep sending them to these schools? So now that's my job. When I was a principal, I refused to accept some applicants. And I got all kinds of letters of reprimand. You have to take them. I said, I'm not taking it. I'm not taking her. They're not right. And they can't handle our kids. They don't, they, don't, they don't feel what our kids need. They don't have it. They're not willing to go that extra mile because our kids need the extra mile. How can we eliminate the teacher just in all? I mean, maybe she shouldn't be at any school. Yeah, but the teachers, uh, they're, they're protected by their rights and all of this stuff. So you have, the, you have the difference between what's more important, the employee or the child. You see, the teaching profession, and teachers have a union, which is a good thing. People ought to have unions to protect their rights. But the teacher unions are a different kind of union. We're the only union that I know of. There's two differences. We're the only union in America that I know of that requires a college degree to join a union. Other people with college degrees, to my knowledge, don't have unions. They have organizations, but they don't. Unions mean you can strike. You can go on strikes, I refuse to work. The second thing is the product that we produce is more important than the employee. And other unions will say, for example, if you, you belong to the Teamsters Union, the product that you produce, or the Longshoremen's Union, or the, the, the truckers, you're more important than the truck. You're more important than the, the, the goods. If you're in General Motors, you're more important than the automobile. So you can stop the line and just watch it and stay out for two weeks. But kids, you can't turn your back on them because they're more important than we are. And if we believe that, then we never turn our backs on them and we never say, I've done enough. You never do enough. This thing we do called teaching is a sacred profession. It's the most important profession in the world. The, the public school system is more important than Wall Street. It's more important than police officers. It's more important than the government. It's more important than any institution that we know of because it's the only institution that by law requires that children participate in it or somebody's breaking the law. Every other law that applies to students, children, tells them what they can't do. They can't drink. They can't drive. They can't vote. They can't smoke. They can't have sex. They can't be out after curfew and all this kind of these are, and these are good rules. Can't do this, can't do that, until you're grown up. But one law applies to you that says what you must do, you must go to school. You can break the law when you're six years old. If you don't go to school, somebody's in trouble. The parent of that child is in trouble if we enforce the law, you see. So schools have to be embracing, and schools have to be so compelling and so effective that students feel empowered when they come to school and can't wait to get to school the next day. How, what about uh, classroom size? How does that play a role? In, 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 uh, it does play a role, but it's not the most important thing. For good teachers, great teachers, 35 might be fine. For some teachers, five is too many. What's the magic number? I don't know. 
I really don't know. You see, I taught trigonometry, I taught basic math. You can give me a whole classroom full of kids. As long as they understand what I'm talking about, I just have more papers to grade. But I'm not frustrated by the number of students I have. I might have to break them up into small groups. I might have to spend more time with them. I might have to tutor them after school. Oh, do I get paid for that? No. Do people want to do that anymore? I don't know. Some do. There's some wonderful teachers out there. I'm not disparaging that. But if we don't figure out a way, and I'm moving in that direction, trying to be very revolutionary if I can. Let's take middle school, for example. Do you know that grades matter from K through eight, kindergarten through eighth grade? But they don't count. You literally can fail every class in kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. You will be in high school because you had one thing, birthdays. You get old enough, you're not in eighth grade anymore. We're going to put you in high school. You may still not know how to read, not how, know how to write your name, but we'll put you in high school. Now, how do you expect to get a graduate out of that? You can't. You can't. So, if the student is skills deficient, not the subject matter, the skills, he cannot read, he or she cannot read, cannot write, and cannot do mathematics. We don't need to teach them subject matter. We need to teach them those skills inside of the subject matter, if you will, but it's not as important as the skill. So if I'm going to teach you about U.S. history, if you can't read the book, you'd have to listen to me tell you about U.S. history, because you can listen, but you can't read it for yourself. You can't go to the library and do research. You can't get on the internet and read the stuff. You can't solve word problems because you don't understand the words in mathematics. That's, a, that's like being handicapped. That's a handicap, which is why I say you should be able to stay later in high school if you don't have those skills. That's like a special needs student. We can keep special ed kids in school until they're 21. So you we see? need to change the structure of, of the school system. We need to say, are the schools serving all of the kids or just some of the kids? Now, if you say, do schools work? Many people say, yeah, fine, for me. Other kids will say, no. Well, which one do we believe? They're both telling the truth. School systems are doing exactly what they're designed to do. Educate some and not educate others. And you say, we didn't do this on purpose. Yeah, but we did it, and we're still doing it. So the kids that need the most, we don't always send them the best teachers we can find. We don't send them the best teachers first. We send whoever wants to go. And so they need that teacher, and they need those principals and counselors. And even the, even the cafeteria people and the, and, the, and the clerical people, they have to want to love those children. Because some of these kids don't get that love at the home and in the neighborhood. Children have three basic environments. They have the home. They have no ch control over that, especially when they're very little. They have the neighborhood, which can be full of all kinds of things, good and bad. And then they have the school. So if the home and the neighborhood are, are not friendly and cold and dangerous, the school can't afford to be anything but comforting and warm and safe. Please come here. You're safe here. We want you here. And so if you're absent from school, I need to call you. I say, Aaron, I missed you today. Now, if I keep doing that, you're going to have to say, I better come back to school. But if I leave you alone out there and the phone never rings, they don't miss me. They don't care. I get accustomed to not coming to school. I get accustomed to coming, hanging out with other my friends who don't come to school either. You see, kids have a tendency to bond together and find each other. So students that don't want to come to school find other students that don't want to come to school. And now it's okay not to come to school because we reinforce each other. Because when you're young, you make foolish mistakes. You don't think like an adult. Adults would like you to believe that you can be like us, but not until you grow up. You can't be like me because you don't feel what I feel and know what I know. And you don't get but one chance at this thing called public education. After that, you're out on your own. You can't come back to high school when you're 25 years old. You don't have the skills. You say, well, go to, go to night school. Well, you don't have the skills to go to night school. 